Good morning, good day, wherever you are. We hope you're having a great time. My name is Rick Zanotti, and here we are. This is eLearn Chat, where talk is knowledge. And joining us today is our co-host, Don Mahoney. Hey, Don, how are you? Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Rick. Glad to be here. It's a should, beautiful oh, day in Wisconsin. It is a beautiful day out there, isn't it? We're warm out here. Uh, it's getting cool here, but fall's on its way. Well, Don, today we've got... A guest from a long way away. Yes. He is the uh, president and owner of iSpring Solutions, a uh, very popular software and very popular company out here. Um, he is coming to us from Yoshkar Ola, uh, Russia, which is, if just to give people a bearing, central Russia, about 500 miles from Moscow, a beautiful place. I didn't have a chance to get the Yoshkar Ola video I saw on, on the internet. It just it looks like a beautiful place. But without further ado, let us introduce um, Yuri Yuskov from iSpring. Hello, Yuri. How are you today? Welcome. Hi, Rick. How are you today? Good. How are you? Now, for, for those who wonder, it's early our time over here where we're filming. Uh, we are about 8 o'clock, a little after 8 o'clock in the morning, and you are about yeah. 7 o'clock in the evening. Yeah, yeah, 7 p.m. So he's worked a full day, and we're just starting out. So anyway, we're about 11, I guess we are, what, about 11 hours different. Something so like that. this is great. <clears throat> well, Yuri, you've, um, you started iSpring Solutions, what, about five years ago? Actually, actually it was uh, seven years ago, seven. in 2005. Uh, we created a product w which was called initially Flash Spring. Okay. And it was a branch division um, in our a service company and in 2007 we dedicated it to separate business and the product was renamed to iSpring. Okay, great. So the, the full history is about seven years. And I was going to ask you why you called it iSpring and then I saw your website which I have up right now and it says we yes. make PowerPoint spring to life. So that was yeah. a, that answered exactly. my question. It was, it was a trademark conflict and uh, 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 we have to we have to rename uh, the product and uh, choose uh, the closest name, which was iSpring. That's great. Well, iSpring has sprung to life, and it's it's a very good product. We uh, just uh, for people who don't know, we use iSpring. It's one of the tools we use in in our development, and we've been very happy with it. Um, I, I always tell people one thing I really like about it. It's it's for the most part bug free. Yuri keeps insisting there are bugs, but we haven't run into them yet. So, Yay. so. <laughs> <clears throat> after our show last week where we talked about bugs, it's good. Yeah, bugs are no fun. But yeah. um, Yuri and his team have done a great job of, of creating good software with very few bugs, if, if any. Like I said, um, he keeps insisting there are some, but th th they've done a really good job of, of of not making it very noticeable. At least we haven't run into any, any big ones, or even small ones for that matter. So Yuri, do you want to tell us a little bit about the kind of products that you do? Uh, actually about bugs. I think that every software has bugs, but it depends on how the team is serious about hunting bugs and uh, making it better. What we do at iSpring, um, I think that polishing the product and making us it's better and stable is our highest priority, and uh, we focus uh, rather on uh, creating stability, easy to use, and uh, um, well done functionality, rather than adding new and new features. And uh, I think that yes, users uh, appreciate that, and um, uh, maybe it's true that. We are best engineered products in the e-learning market uh, today. That's good. Uh, uh, what uh, what we are doing now? Uh, there is an interesting situation in e-learning area when uh, one company creates authoring tools and other companies create LMS, mm -hmm. and it's sometimes a pain for client to integrate content and into a learning management system. What we have done it and which uh, what will go public very soon is e-learning Crocket is a, a solution which provides a quick start for e-learning if the company just starts e-learning. 
It's a set of uh, authoring tools and hosted elements, all available at subscription. And uh, it allows to start very quickly. You just install tool and uh, create content and publish it in one click to elements. And what, uh, what is one of our main ideas is um, is providing uh, people which uh, with easy to use tools which save their time and money. And uh, I think that uh, this offering will be very interesting and um, very soon we'll uh, make it available for the market. All right, that's great. Now, I have up here from your website, this is a list of the products that you mm -hmm. currently have. And there's different flavors or versions of iSpring, I guess with iSpring Pro and then iSpring Suite. Now, iSpring Suite combines many of these products? Yeah, iSpring Suite is a solution for e-learning. We also work for markets like sales enablement mm -hmm. and uh, uh, provide uh, facilities for creating rich media presentations for sales and marketing. But our greatest focus is e-learning and iSpring Suite covers all basic uh, needs for creating e-learning content easily, quickly in PowerPoint and uh, without deep technical skills. That's great. That's great. And how do you see the, the, the PowerPoint market? How do you see that growing or changing? Uh, are there any differences? Well, let, let me ask you that question first. How do you, how do you see the PowerPoint market for e-learning um, as far as, and it's also uh, marketing, it's e-learning and marketing and, and, and other things. How do you see that evolving? It's a very interesting questions. For example, uh, Microsoft thinks that Microsoft is the leader of e-learning market because PowerPoint is greatest e-learning tool. But uh, I think that nobody in uh, e-learning market thinks that Microsoft is e-learning vendor <laughs> because uh, uh, PowerPoint is an office tool, and uh, uh, so uh, everybody have office tools. So it's not e learning uh, tools, uh, but just general purpose tools. But uh, this is a, a good idea because I think that e learning tools ca should become a sort of office tools, and uh, everybody uh, will have e learning tools in the nearest future because knowledge sharing and uh, learning and uh, information exchange is one of the greatest uh, activity in every business and uh, I think that uh, in, in several years we will come to the idea that everybody in the company or in the every organization will be involved in e-learning some way. Yeah, that's true. And, and the one good thing about PowerPoint yeah, it's interesting. PowerPoint is fairly easy to learn, and yet it has a lot of power. You know, I always hear people saying, I hate PowerPoint. Or, we don't like PowerPoint. PowerPoint isn't the problem. It's usually no. just very bad presentations that, that the people write. PowerPoint itself is really quite nice. Um, <clears throat> it gets better all the time. It does, and I'm, yeah. I'm wondering. So that brings up my next question. Um, with Office 2013 just around the corner, I guess that's that's really close. Have have you folks seen any differences in PowerPoint as far as how it will affect um, iSpring and and e-learning? Uh, actually, every new version of Office allows more uh, provides more capabilities in creating uh, animations, uh, adding rich media, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And of course, we are usually between first who adopt new, um, uh, new features of Office in uh, the e-learning tools. And uh, yes, we, we test new version of Office and uh, uh, track what is changing. And uh, as soon as it will be ready, we'll provide uh, our clients with support of new version of the Office. Are you finding any major changes between PowerPoint 2010, for uh, example, uh, and... I, I, I didn't review the new changes uh, personally. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, so far, I don't know if, if, if there are substantial changes like we had uh, between 2003 and 2007. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I can imagine that uh, 
changes will be uh, not very uh, so it will be just uh, some peripheral changes not changes in file format or like that right right they're, they're pretty stable right now on on some of the things they're doing yeah. i think so Dawn, how's the uh, chat room? Anybody have questions? Oh, we're, or? we're chatting about PowerPoint as usual. Uh, and and uh, Leva is uh, convinced that it's not an e-learning development tool, but, um, and I'm not throwing you under the bus, Leva, I, I agree with you. I think what happens often when people try to use it in a development mode, they continue to make very linear programs going slide to slide to slide and they've just taken a bad presentation and made a bad digital delivery um, module out of it. That's always the issue no matter what you create in. My um, question about iSpring, having never used it, I'll admit that out loud, is um, when it converts to Flash and HTML, uh, do you build the interactions and um, the hidden slide functionality branching and so forth? Do you build that in PowerPoint and then it converts seamlessly? I'll use that word um, in iSpring, or do you build the interaction pieces in iSpring? Uh, do you mean PowerPoint interactions or some external interaction which we insert into PowerPoint? I, I didn't catch the last part. It broke up on me. Uh, so we... Let me rephrase Let me rephrase her question okay. a little bit. In essence, what Dawn is asking is when you do development in PowerPoint for e-learning, she's asking do you create the interactions in PowerPoint or do you use iSpring to create interactions or... I guess richer content. I understand. Uh, actually, both ways. Uh, uh, I think that uh, PowerPoint is pretty advanced tools tool uh, for creating interactive content, and uh, not every expert knows full power of PowerPoint. Agreed. And uh, it's it's possible to create pretty advanced content in PowerPoint without any external to external tools. But I think also provides a set of uh, interaction templates which allows to create interactive objects uh, for learning and insert them into PowerPoint. Uh, I think that uh, uh, both ways, ways make sense. If, okay. you, if uh, some person who creates learning have deep knowledge of PowerPoint, they can, can create really advanced, very really interactive content but uh, there are also uh, interaction templates available in iSpring suite and in the market which allows to create interactive uh, content quickly using templates and both, in, both, both ways uh, work actually oh either way will work um, and I'm thinking of let's just say hovering over a button or an area of a screen and having pop-up text or um, branching where depending on the answer the learner chooses brings up different answers so in thinking about development I, I, I admit to only being a, a pretty high-end intermediate user on those in those cases but I would probably create it in PowerPoint because I'd be most familiar with that and it would transfer to iSpring cleanly. It actually, it depends. If you mean branching, branching uh, is uh, created using iSpring. Mm -hmm. um, uh, some effects, animations, etc. basically are created with PowerPoint. Yeah, so it, so it depends. You have quite a bit of power. Um, We've done we've done development in 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 the several of the PowerPoint to Flash tools, and as long as you, you know how to set up your PowerPoint and you have, and because a lot of the branching is done in PowerPoint, and and the tool like iSpring will will adjust to it, it's it's fairly easy to do that kind of stuff. Ho hovers can be a little trickier, um, only because of just the nature of of some of the things, but you can do those too. Um, most stuff you can do it just depends. On, on what you're doing and how you're doing it. Um. <clears throat> yeah, uh, that's very important. And uh, what can I add about e-learning content? 
uh, it's it's different than presentation, especially if presentation is uh, uh, it's it's in 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 room presentation. When you do uh, remote presentation, presentation without presenter, your content should be more interactive, more more engaging, more visual, and it requires uh, more effort to create good learning content. The questions in the chat room are, are coming in, and one of the first questions is, can we see any examples or are there examples unlocked on your website? Uh, yes, what, what examples, examples would you like to... Uh, uh, specifically, uh, the question was for drag and drop functionality. Drag and drop. Uh, I think that some sort of drag and drop can be created with ice, uh, with the PowerPoint, but uh, uh, we have a quiz maker with, which have uh, a lot of drag, drag and drop things. Uh, okay. and, uh, so uh, that, that would be part of the suite? Yes, iSpring QuizMaker is a part of Suite, but QuizMaker is also available as, as a standalone product, and it's it's not connected connected to PowerPoint. Okay. It's a, it's a separate product, but it it's it works with PowerPoint. It's integrated into PowerPoint and is part of Suite. So in essence, when you publish, if you use standard PowerPoint and then you go into QuizMaker then that mm -hmm. also becomes part of the publish at the end. So it's seamless. You yeah. don't really realize you're out of one into the other. Um, it's a fairly seamless way of creating the, the training. And what is unique about iSpring, iSpring can package every everything in one flash file. So all resources, players, quizzes will be, videos will be embedded in one flash file. And this is a unique uh, feature which is available in iSpring only. Uh, next question is, uh, how can it, what formats can you export um, once it's been um, converted in iSpring? What, how can it be exported into what formats? And the, the initial, another question is, I, uh, readability and import export into uh, LMS. Is it SCORM, AICC, so forth? Yeah, we support all editions of SCORM and AICC as well. And I, I think that as soon as Team Can will be more mature, we will uh, support Team Can as well. So. Oh, okay. You're working on that now. Uh, we we do research, but I think that we should wait several months for Team Can to be more um, more um, to become more mature, more yes. more stable, more stable. As soon as this standard will be adopted by some leading vendors, we will also adopt it. Uh, the expa export formats? Is that an easy uh, question currently, or a hard question? Currently, we export to Flash, okay. to HTML5, to Xe, and uh, Zip. What was, what was the last one? Zip. Oh, Zip. Zip. Okay. Zip. Mm -hmm. Now, I have seen your HTML5 converter. It's really quite good. Um, They've done a great job on the conversion from from um, from PowerPoint into HTML5. It's really quite quite elegant. It's one of the best I've seen. Very good yeah, job. It's, it, it works. It works nice. But the conversion is uh, only part of the tool. And uh, what we do now is uh, implementing all other things like players, uh, quizzes, etc. In also in HTML5. And in several months, we'll uh, put the, uh, uh, we will uh, present this product to the market. I think that it's uh, what a substantial amount of uh, our clients need, and uh, we constantly get requests. Uh, and I think that uh, this will be the tool which market need now. That's good. Are there any other questions right now, Don? Uh, about interactivity, continuing that conversation, um, Leva wants to know, is everything embedded, um, like video, audio, etc., cetera, um, or you said a moment ago that it's one file when converted to Flash, so I guess the question is, does it break out video, audio, and so forth as separate files? Yes, it's, it's, it's an option which allows to 
output every media resource as a separate file or embed everything into one flash file. Also, we have an option of uh, output all slides in one file or provide uh, every slide as a separate file. It, it, it can be easily adjusted how to output your content. And it allows for streaming video. Uh, actually, uh, streaming video requires Flash Media Server, if we talk about Flash. Uh, video is not fully streaming uh, without uh, media server, but... Uh, um, uh, it preloads the video. Yeah. It, of course it preloads the video. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. So, but, but, but Yuri's right. If you want to do any kind of streaming, um, usually you need the Flash uh, media server, which, or the Adobe media yeah. server, which is a little different a little more complex to use, and then you then you have to deal with some firewall issues, which you don't usually have. So and, uh, and they need media server, which is pretty expensive to have. It, it is, and, and, and then you have to open up your firewall. There's a little firewall issue when you do that. We've worked with clients that have had it, and you have to set it up and open up things so that it works. Um, so, But I, we have used video in iSpring, and <clears throat> Honestly, you really can't tell it's not streaming. It's pretty fast. Uh, oh. If your bandwidth is good, it'll load very quickly. Yeah. Even Actually, when it's uh, uh, we can say streaming about video, which is not uh, downloaded from media server, which is not played from media server, which is just uh, uh, starts playing when the first part of a video file arrived to the player. And uh, yes, our video works this way, so it, it starts pretty quickly. Now, a lot of people don't know. I've, I, you and I have had a lot of emails and talks. We've become friends through through emails and 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 talking on Twitter, but uh, not Twitter, but um, Skype. But one thing Yuri did before this, he was a professor of programming, um, yeah. which is. I always find that interesting. And you said you have a, a pet project, something that's very close to you. You're creating a, a programming school in your area. Yeah, I have a programming school for children. Oh. Uh, a bit more than 200 children started learning this school this year. And uh, uh, this is a very, very amazing experience for me because uh, uh, so, uh, you, you know that currently, these, these days, children sp spend a lot of their time with computer, and actually it's a, a waste of their time. They do not learn, and do, they do not <laughs> uh, make them, themselves better when they spend the, their time with computer. We give them another way. They create something with computer. They learn uh, information technology, and they learn pretty advanced things like information modeling and they do they start understand information modeling in early stage maybe first second grade of the school and actually information modeling is pretty advanced thing if we uh, if you will tell about programmers uh, the difference between average programming and advanced programmer is that uh, advanced programmer knows information modeling and uh, this is the activity we give them in our school when they are child. I think that's it. Uh, that's very will be very helpful for them, even if they will not become a programmers. If they become will become TV producers or writers, uh, this will help them. Yeah, that's great. So that's a that's that's one of Yuri's passions that I, I thought was great. You know, having having a programming background myself, I. I, I just think not enough people get into programming nowadays or people use computers, but very few really know how to program them or how to design or create. Uh, and Yuri and I were talking about this the other day. It's, it's really creating the foundation, creating good design so that then the software works really well. It's, it's so important to have that good foundation, the design capability. And now, Yuri was saying that in... I think you were mentioning that in, in your universities they have three different programs. Um, uh, one of them was, for example, an engineer, then you have a technician, and then you have a worker, uh, all who do different parts of programming. Yeah. 
actually university creates engineers mm -hmm. but uh, uh, it's it's common uh, common situation when universities decrease decrease the level of complexity of their educational programs for example uh, people uh, maybe 10 years ago usually the, uh, the education was started with pascal or some some um, some pretty complex language uh, nowadays uh, sometimes uh, learning programmer programming starts with java and this is not not a good practice because uh, yes it's easy but it doesn't give uh, proper experience uh, to people who study programming well, one of the things we were talking about is you know, one of the Pascal is, is an older programming language has been around forever, still used in many applications. But the beauty of Pascal is it teaches logic. It teaches very good programming constructs, which, which also makes for good engineers later. And I know we're getting off the e-learning topic, but it's always but it's interesting because way off for me. Uh, but it's inter what's what's important about that is the better your foundations in logic, the better you can develop code, the better you can develop programs. And that's, that's why we always talk about that, how important it is to, to understand the, the functions of, of programming. And that's, I think that makes a huge difference. Um, and unfortunately, we're losing a little bit of that. There's less and less of that being taught. Everybody wants the quick fix. Let's get the program out there. Um, but I'd rather see slower development times and better quality than faster development times with less quality it's because in, in the long run it affects all of us it's actually it depends on professionalism mm -hmm. sometimes uh, um, right people can provide faster development time and better quality right so i uh there's a couple lingering questions and um also a que uh, um, presence on twitter do you feel like you're going to um expand your presence on twitter we would like to see more. Yes, we plan to uh, launch our technical support channel um, uh, to provide answers to some short questions in real time. Okay, that's great. Um, yeah. Languages for iSpring, is it, um, are there language translation packages? Uh, Can you write in your native language? I'm thinking um, about Leva and her um, challenges with the language in Belgian and so yeah. forth that she deals with. Okay, uh, primary lang language is uh, is English for iSpring. Now we uh, we have translation to French and technical support in French, and also in several months uh, German will appear, and we are working on Spanish. So far, we, we don't we do not support Spanish, but it's it's in our nearest plans. Okay, um, and then also programming languages, yeah, so I think you really uh, answered all of that, just making sure uh, to take I, care of the question. What, 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 kind, of, what uh, kind of question does she have on programming language? Uh, uh, it, that question came in and then you spoke about programming language, uh, okay. so I feel like we're there. Um, and I think I've got them all. Oh, liquid layout was another question. And I'll proclaim to not know what that means. Li liquid uh, layout is, is something that I, I think Adobe may have coined. I'm not sure. But it's the ability to convert your content from uh, a standard desktop into any kind of tablet or mobile device. So, for example, you design once, but the layout automatically morphs into different formats, whether it's a, a Kindle Fire, an iPad, um, a regular Kindle or maybe a Nook, depending on what, so, so the content l is liquid in terms of it's very moldable and it, and it adjusts to whatever format. Um, so I guess the question is, does, does iSpring support a liquid format at yeah. this point? Uh, the version 7, which will come in several months, uh, will have uh, capability to uh, create content which plays uh, on desktop and the tablets and looks pretty similar. But uh, the behavior will be a bit different. For example, uh, in tablets you should have navigation connected to bounds of the screen. 
uh, and uh, on the stop is, it's not uh, it's not uh, very necessary. So yeah, we we, we create uh, we will cre in next version we will create a content which will play both on desktop and uh, mobile devices and uh, uh, on desktop it will uh, it, it will be shown as Flash or HTML5 depending on browser. On mobile devices it, it will be HTML5. Uh, layout will be almost the same, but it will uh, it will be a bit different uh, uh, because uh, mobile devices has different uh, user interface. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, you can't make a mouse over on a, a mobile device. Right. Right. That doesn't work. And I misquoted the question of earlier about programming languages. What are you teaching at your school for children? Was the question. Uh, uh, and, uh, we basically do not teach uh, programming in the school at early stages. As I said, we teach information modeling, we teach robotics, but robotics have no uh, strict programming at early stages. It's just visual programming with blocks. We use Lego Mindstorms, which uh, is pretty similar, is simple to use. It is pretty simple but uh, they create very interesting projects in uh, in uh, um, um, how it's in um, when uh, children get uh, maybe in age class we teach uh, pascal and javascript they learn pascal javascript and perl <laughs> that makes so we sense have a course of classic programming and course of uh, um, uh, course of uh, web programming. Web programming is Perl and JavaScript. Okay, Perl and JavaScript. In, in, your, in university, of course, we have full cycle of uh, programming. About fifteen languages uh, uh, are taught during five years. Uh, as for iSpring, iSpring is written in C plus uh, plus, and uh, it's its major language is used for iSpring, and it has maybe. A bit less than one million rows of C++ hmm. uh, code. Pretty complex project, actually. Don, that's only a million lines of code. Are you up for it? Yeah, no, I'll, I'll, I like to put the key in the car and turn <laughs> it on and drive, so just picture me never learning C++. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it doesn't have gas in it? Okay, I can go to the gas station. <laughs> I know just enough code to be dangerous, very dangerous. Now, Yuri, I've got a slide up which has uh, all the different products that mm -hmm. that uh, you folks produce. Do you want to talk a little bit about what each product does? Yes, we can. Uh, so, and I took this from your products page. Okay. So, High Spring Converter is our uh, latest uh, tool which creates uh, HTML5 content from PowerPoint. Uh, the main purpose of uh, this tool is uh, making PowerPoint viewable on iPad. Of course, it, it can work for e-learning and it supports Form, a AICC, etc. Uh, for now, I think that uh, there is not a huge variety of mobile learning tools in the market and uh, People like iSpring Converter because it does uh, its uh, conversion job fairly well. iSpring Pro is a pretty advanced tool which allows to create uh, uh, flash presentations from PowerPoint and uh, add video, audio, and uh, synchronize video and audio playback with this presentation. And the player in iSpring Pro is pretty advanced. It's, you can flexibly customize uh, player layout, uh, um, navigation, etc. iSpring Pro is based on PowerPoint to Flash conversion technology. It doesn't support uh, uh, PowerPoint to HTML5 in current version. iSpring, iSpring Suite is a, is a suite. It, it, it includes uh, all our products. Uh, iSpring Pro with Maker and Interactions, and uh, I think that every e-learning developer, developer uh, which uh, use 
who use PowerPoint will be satisfied with what uh, these uh, tools, to which, what, what I Spring Suite allows to do using PowerPoint and uh, our tools. Quizmaker is a part of iSpring Suite, but it's also available uh, as a standalone tool. It's pretty advanced uh, quiz maker. It supports uh, uh, 12 question types for um, quizzes and the same number for surveys. Um, it's, it's pretty popular and uh, we got very positive uh, reviews about it. iSpring Online is our hosted LMS. The main idea of iSpring Online is perfect integration with our tools and uh, those who use iSpring Online and iSpring tools should not, do not need to, to spend time on integration. It works and publication, publication is available from our uh, tools and it's just one click publishing. Uh, iSpring platform provides our technology as a set of SDKs and companies who want to integrate PowerPoint to Flash functionality in the application can just use iSpring platform and uh, create uh, this functionality in their products. I can say that we have about 150 OEM partners who use iSpring platform and some, some of this company also works in e-learning space. That's great. We really appreciate that. And uh, we've been showing your website on and off throughout the... So I'll show it one last time now. And so if you need any more information on iSpring, you can just go to www.ispringsolutions.com. And it's all there. This is the blog for iSpring. And um, in fact, it was interesting because recently, uh, Yuri's company put out a blog on our constitution which was on Constitution Day, and I, I sent them a note saying, this is, this is pretty cool. Um, I think you folks know more about our Constitution than we do, which is always a little scary. Um, but it was, it was good. I think it was a good reminder of, of, of a very good document. Yes. I'll give a plug for watching you on Twitter. We want to see tips and tools and, and pointing to you on Twitter. We'll follow you. Yeah, and that's iSpring Solutions on Twitter, correct? Yeah, uh, iSpring Pro on Twitter. iSpring Pro, okay. Oh, okay. I think I might have been following the wrong person. <laughs> um, <coughs> I think I have an iSpring Solutions for some odd reason. But that's probably a different one, right? I hope it's Yuri's so. company. Yeah, I think, I think it is, because it's usually that kind of stuff. Anyway, Yuri, we really appreciate you coming on today. Um, and and thank you. Yuri was afraid that his English wouldn't be good. His English is, is excellent. Excellent. Um, so you've had no problem communicating today. And and we really appreciate having you on. And and we wish you the best of luck with, with this version and, and future versions of iSpring. Also, if you want to meet Yuri in person, he will be at DevLearn in Las Vegas on the at the end of October. Um, so definitely make it a point to go by his booth, say hi to him, and I guess you'll have other people there also in the booth? Yes, there will be also uh, four people except me on the booth, and we, have, uh, we will bring very nice ice spring souvenirs, and uh, we will also uh, uh, have a sort of uh, lottery for ice spring licenses. That sounds great. So again, he'll be at DevLearn. Uh, so you can meet him over there and uh, definitely take a look at the software. It's very good software. Um, I highly recommend it. We've used it with, with very good success. So, Yuri, again, thanks a lot for being here. Don, as always. And Thank you. we will see you next week. And next week, I believe, is the 10th. And we have uh, Chris Allen from Zebra oh, Zaps. Right. He will be here see from more Zebras. See more Zebras. We will have Chris Allen here, a great guy, too. Uh, looking forward to that. Well, again, Yuri, thanks you very much for being here. And for all you guys in the chat room, thanks for being there live. And if you're watching the recording, please subscribe. And we'll see you guys every week on eLearn Chat. Goodbye, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Rick. Thank you, Don. Thank Bye -bye. you. So we're going to wrap this up.